Okay, finally, we are trying to look at the research activities that's happening in the country and also uh, further research that is planned. Of course, we are working on uh, the aging of fish by taking otolith of the fish and uh, looking at the otoliths. There was a big uh, conventional tagging uh, activity hap that happened during the uh, 2007 to 2009, where about 16,000 fish were tagged and released in Maldivian waters. So what during this activity, what we did was we caught small tuna, skipjack and yellowfin, uh, inserted a spaghetti tag. This is a spaghetti tag that goes into the fish. And the fish is released. This takes about uh, 10 to 15 seconds. By the time the fish is out of the water and it goes back into the water, it takes about 10 to 15 seconds once you uh, are good at doing it. <clears throat> so this was looking at the interaction movement of the fish that's found in the Maldives, whether they are going to other parts of the Indian Ocean, whether the fish that are found in other parts of the Indian Ocean, whether they were coming to Maldivian waters. So this was a big tagging operation during which we learned that a lot of uh, tagged fish released in the Maldives traveled all the way across the Indian Ocean to the coasts of uh, Africa. And then also the fish tagged in the coasts of Africa, they were caught in Maldivian waters. So we know that the, there's continuous movement of fish and then of course if you are trying to manage the fishery properly, there has to be a cooperative effort from all the uh, fishing companies and fishers operating in the Indian Ocean. Then we also did uh, what we call satellite tagging. This was done on large tuna because the tag was quite big. Uh, and with this, what we are trying to look at is the condition of the water and how the fish moves. So how this tag works is that it, once it is set, it will start recording all that data, oceanographic data and also the movement data onto the uh, tag. So you can set it to automatically break the wire and come to the surface. So the tag will float to the surface. If you set it for two months, one year, two years, it will break the wire and it will come to the surface. This is a float here. And with, this, with the help of this antenna, it will transmit all the information via satellite uh, to the receiving computer. So that is how uh, data is collected from this. And then we did another activity where we did acoustic tagging. Here what we were doing is uh, we made an insertion in the belly of the fish and inserted a small transmitter inside it. So that keeps emitting a sound. And then uh, we release the fish into the water. This takes about uh, two minutes to insert and stitch the fish and put it back into the water. And then this activity was done around fads because we were interested in seeing how long this fish stay near the fat or whether this fish is moving from one fat to the other. Uh, so this was done uh, in uh, skipjacks, yellowfin, and also some other species that you find near the fed. And then of course there is a receiver fixed on the fat that will listen to the sound emitted by the transmitter. So as long as the fish is in range around the fat, the receiver receives that signal. So papers have been published on this uh, work as well. Uh, then of course we are looking at the length and girth of the fish caught from different uh, schools, like fed schools, free swimming schools, 
log associated schools or shark associations or sea mounts. This is again to understand whether uh, there is a difference in the uh, weight or size of the fish caught from these different schools. Because sometimes we find the uh, associations around fads are there with plenty of uh, tuna around the fads, but around the fad you may not find a lot of food to support all this uh, large quantity of tuna. So we are interested in knowing whether the size of tuna around fads are smaller than the uh, like girth or the size of tuna that's found in free swimming schools. We are also looking at the stomach content, what the fish eat, whether it varies seasonally or whether it varies depending on from where you are catching the fish. Then, of course, uh, other studies that we are doing is uh, study the bycatch in the tuna fishery. So we are collecting data to learn about the bycatch, what is the amount of bycatch that we have, and also interaction with other organisms like whales, dolphins, oceanic sharks, turtles, and of course, a lot of birds, seabirds are associated with the uh, tuna schools. And we are also looking at the use of fuel, the amount of fuel that's being used to catch one ton of tuna. So how much the fishing fleet is using uh, fuel for catching tuna? And what is the amount of fish caught from fads? So today if we uh, look at the data with the log introduction of logbooks, it is becoming more clear the num amount, <coughs> the amount of time the the fishers use fads are increasing. We are also interested in looking at the variation of size of the fish caught in the Maldives. Already the data we have collected over several years have shown the size of uh, skipjack landed in the Maldives. The larger size skipjacks are declining. <coughs> so when we talk about sustainable exploitation of the resources, you will find we don't operate any large nets for catching tuna in the Maldives. We catch them by line. <coughs> and we also see that fishers have practices where they do not remove any drifting objects uh, that's associated with tuna because they understand that if they remove the drifting objects, the tuna school will disperse. <clears throat> Fishers also believe that sharks around tuna schools help uh, the fish to stay together as a school. Around fads, fish aggregating devices, only pole and line fishing is allowed. Even trolling or using hand line is not allowed around fads. You will find mammals, sharks, turtles, seabirds associated with tuna schools. They are protected in the Maldives because the fishers and also the government realize that it's important to ensure the sustainable exploitation of resources. Okay, as so a take home message, we need to learn lessons from fishers in other parts of the world and ensure that we exploit both live bait and tuna fishery resources sustainably to guarantee the main source of protein, the main source of protein for the Maldivians is of course coming from Tuna to the communities across the Maldives are safe. And Maldives is said to be one of the largest consumer per capita consumer of 
tuna in the world. So we consume quite a lot of tuna that we catch. Just before I conclude, I will try to show you an association that we have seen around the sea mount where sharks are actually seen around the uh, sea mount where the fishermen are operating their pole and line gear. Again, this is raw footage, so I have not edited it. These are things uh, we collect during our uh, observation trips with the fishermen. So according to some fishermen, it's very difficult on some days to catch uh, tuna because the shark, they chase the tuna that's caught on the line and they bite on the uh, fish. Okay. With that, I will conclude. Yes.